What is up ladies and gentlemen, Manny here. Welcome back to another detailed climbing shoe review. Today we're gonna take a look at the Scarpa Instinct VS. You're psyched for that too? Amazing, so let's go. As usual, I'm gonna divide the video into two rough sections. First of all, the general appearance and features of the shoe and secondly, the performance of the shoe. I'm gonna try to put some timestamps here in the frame and also down below in the description in the comments. So if you wanna skip something and be a heretic, then uh, go for it. I also want to mention that I bought the shoe myself in a shop for the regular price, so there is no sponsoring from Scarpa involved here. You can expect a more or less objective opinion. Let's start with sizing. This is a 39.5 EU and we're therefore at the a bit lower end of the spectrum when it comes to sizing. My street shoe size is 42 EU and this is also what I use for 510 teams, 42 EU, but I can go down as low as 38.5 on some Sportivas. So we're at the bit lower end of the spectrum here with 39.5 and, and should also be mentioned that the shoe almost does not stretch out in any way, shape or form if you break it in because all the materials are synthetic so this is by the way also interesting for the vegan crew uh, yeah synthetic upper and the rest of it is rubber does not stretch a lot so you should fit it really properly already in your first trying on session in the shop Taking a look at the general shape of the shoe, we can see a wider toe box, significantly wider than something, for example, like the uh, Scarpa Drago or the 510 team that I've got here as well. Pretty comparable, actually, when it comes to something like the Katana from La Sportiva or another more beginner-oriented model, the Scarpa Vapor, which I've got here as well. So in terms of wideness, definitely a bit more on the wider side. I thought that's gonna be a problem for me because I have more narrow feet and I fit quite well into something like the 510 team but uh, when I tried it actually on in the shop it felt really nice felt really comfortable and I decided to just give it a try to see how it works out and I'm happy that I did it because the shoe worked quite well for me actually so I suppose it's more important that if you have wider feet that it don't step into something that is more narrow but if you actually have narrow feet then you can try some wider shoes as well especially if they are a bit harder and give a bit more support like this model here we're gonna talk about that in a second. We see a relatively shallow toe box and a quite pointy tip and this is something that I usually like in terms of climbing shoes doesn't really matter which model we're talking about because these shoes are able to nestle themselves into even tiny little pockety footholds and overhangs and we're looking at something in comparison like the uh, 510 team here we can see a lot rounder of a toe box there and this is why the team sometimes has troubles with that another comparison would be the Drago which has a pointy tip as well but if we put them side by side we can see that the Drago toe box is a lot higher and this way the Drago sometimes um, pops itself off of tiny little footholds in the overhang I've demonstrated that in my Drago review uh, comparing that to a Katana for example the Katana has similar features it's very pointy and has a very shallow toe box as well as you can see even shallower than the uh, Instinct VS but at some point the, the benefit really wears off so in terms of downturn and overall aggressiveness of the shoe we are moving on to something that I would call the middle ground here as you can see the shoe comes with a slight downturn but not uh, comparable to something like the Drago for example which is a lot more aggressive although it must be mentioned that the Drago loses its downturn quite a lot and quite quickly as I've discussed in my Drago review or something even like the 510 team and as you can see here on this model the downturn actually preserved and I've got this thing here for years and I climbed it for years even the sole is still intact I still need to resole this guy actually because I want to climb it again and then we've got the other at the other end of the spectrum with something like the Katana for example which you can see is a lot more flatter shoe and also loses even the flatness with time so that it becomes kind of you know con concave or convex I don't know what the word is but yeah it's kind of an empty downturn after some time and here we've got even the uh, the Scarpa Vapor as well Kept, keeps the flatness a bit better than the Katana in my opinion but again at the other, other end of the spectrum the Instinct VS moves in the middle of the spectrum when it comes to a downturn and overall aggressiveness and this also leads me to the next thing that we have to talk about and that is hardness of the shoe because I had the feeling that the Instinct VS kept its downturn actually quite nice I climbed this one one very intensely for 10, uh, 10 weeks now did a lot of volume a lot of meters in very hot uh, conditions as well and it still 
kept its downturn quite nicely as you can see uh, compared to something like the Drago which loses its downturn a lot. I mean the Drago comes in a lot more aggressive as the uh, Instinct VS when it's new but then loses the downturn quite a bit especially in hot conditions. And uh, yeah, the shoe is hard. As you can see, it's not as easily folded together as the uh, softies like the uh, Drago here. As you can see, you can really make this one really small. And the same thing is true for the 510 team. So in terms of hardness, we are very comparable here with something like the Katana, which is maybe even a bit harder than the uh, the, the Scarpa Instinct. And also as well, the, the Vapor, right? The Vapor doesn't really let itself fold at all. So in terms of hardness, definitely on the harder side. And I this is actually a point that I really liked about the shoe. We're gonna talk about that later in the performance chapter. Taking a look at the upper, the instep of the shoe. Let's start with the toe hook. We've got here a nice rubber patch, not too big, as you can see with some ridges coming out there and it's also roughened up. It's kind of interesting in terms of style how they created it. Unfortunately, they left a little hole here which leaves some room for a potentially sharp toe hook key problem to um, rip this rubber piece off here a little bit. I didn't personally have that problem now because I didn't test it too much in a uh, bouldering setting, but I can imagine that happening. In terms of size of the toe hook, we are, as you can see, uh, quite significantly below something like the uh, Scarpa Drago, which is a much more bouldering oriented shoe, right? Or even also the 510 Team, which has a lot bigger rubber patch. Uh, but I have found, nevertheless, on some toe hooks, this rubber patch here really functional. It has good grip. It is thicker, so you don't uh, get painful toe hooks that easily as on the more softer models like the Drago, for example. Moving up towards the tongue of the shoe, we see one very simplistic closure system, one velcro. This is something that I really like because not a lot of stuff can go wrong with this. This is also something that I really like about the Drago and the 510 team. Just one simple closure system. Comparing this to something like the Tenaya Oasi for example where you've got all these bands and two patches of velcro on there. A lot of stuff can go wrong with this, right? Usually the bands would go loose after some time or they would wear out and rip off after some time. This thing is not gonna go bad for a really long time. You can resole the shoe without having troubles uh, with the closure system or anything like that, right? So this is something that I really like. Below that, we've got a flexi tongue with this kind of, uh, you know, flexible synthetic material there, this fabric here. Uh, which is good because it makes the shoe a lot more comfortable and a lot more easy to put on. And then we have something that I especially want to talk about and this is this uh, loop here of synthetic leather which is just, just super sturdy and helps really a lot when putting on the shoe. This is assisting greatly when putting on the shoe. I'm trying to make a shot of that, a separate shot of that as well. Uh, you can put a lot of pressure and force and stress onto this thing and it's not gonna rip off, right? Comparing to something like the, um, the 510 Team where we have this kind of loop here as well on the tongue, but uh, it's a lot more fragile and a lot thinner and you can't get your fingers in there quickly, right? Here you can get your fingers in quickly and you just push on, push, pull on the shoe essentially and you're done. The heel box is a solid sturdy box of rubber. As you can see, we're having a tough time pushing, squishing this together here. This is in congruence with the general hardness of the shoe. Uh, comparing this to something like the 510 Team, which is super soft also in the heel. And as well, the Scarpa Drago, of course, super soft in the heel. There is no resistance here at all. But I must say, I really like it. You don't, you, it's not like you lack any feeling for heel hooking or something. Something that I also really like uh, when it comes to Scarpa heels in general is how they fix down uh, the lower piece of rubber that's coming from the lower end of the heel up there with another diagonal piece of rubber so that it's pre prevented that with time on certain heel hooks you're gonna rip yourself this piece of rubber off like it has happened for example on an earlier model not so modern model of Scarpa the uh, the vapor here as you can see this is the general problem right with time you're gonna rip yourself this piece of rubber off and your heel hook basically goes to crap so uh, 
well here this is nicely prevented with this diagonal rubber they did it the same way on the scapa drago so here we can actually see how their climbing shoes evolved with time they managed this problem here very nicely uh, and even nicer in my opinion on the scapa drago why because here they went around with a black piece of rubber and the black rubber of course has more friction right the 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 purpose of the orange rubber here is very nicely done as well by fixing this rubber down but the orange rubber itself doesn't have as much friction as the black rubber and i actually could feel that on some very heel hooky climbs that i did during the testing phase so yeah good kudos kudos to them that they now improved upon that even further by making the rubber black and giving it more friction also here now as you can see here they why they did this ex exactly it also has to do with downturn retention here on the scarpa drago they managed the downturn retention between the toe box and the heel box with this kind of special orange rubber which is probably supposed to keep its flexi flexi uh, characteristics even after some time and as you can see it works quite well here the only problem with downturn retention is not uh, in this area but it's rather in the toe box area in the drago right the toe box itself loses a lot of downturn with time and this is how the main downturn loss happens in the drago here we've got a very solid toe box which keeps its downturn because of the hardiness of the shoe very well and the downturn retention between the toe box and the heel box is done with, via this orange rubber as well but at the same time they are using Using this kind of rubber for fixing down the uh, the stripe that's coming here from the lower end of the heel box so here they separated that and this way they are able to also provide here some more sticky rubber so probably this is the better solution in the end and this is why they evolved to that with time so really interesting to see the evolution of scarpa here and we also have um, the usual which is something that i really like really really sturdy uh, loops here for slipping into the shoe this is not not something fragile like on the 510 team for example where uh, you basically it's uncommon to not rip off this stuff with time right as you can see i already ripped it out partially here as well already on this model and this is something that you cannot really prevent on this kind of uh, shoe the wideness of the heel box is on the wider end of the spectrum which is in congruence with the general wideness of the shoe this becomes very apparent when we pull in the Scarpa Drago and the 510 team here for comparison you can see here the huge difference I was kind of hesitant about that when it comes to buying the shoe because I have a more narrow foot I fit into something like the 510 team quite well I was afraid that I'm gonna slip out of the heel hook all of the time but that was not the case the heel hook did actually hold on quite well and uh, even comparable to the 510 team so this is really something that's personal preference some people have wider heels some people have more narrow heels and this is definitely something supposedly for wider heels although it fitted on my narrow heel as well so yeah personal preference whether that's good or not the shoe comes with a four millimeter sole of Vibram XS Edge rubber and this leads directly into the topic of durability. I had the feeling in terms of general durability, the shoe performed in the middle ground of the spectrum. The downturn retention is quite decent due to the system here and in the toe box we've got the hard rubber, the relatively hard rubber XS Edge at least and this keeps the downturn here quite as well. And in terms of rubber loss over time, we are also quite good here because the XS Edge rubber is simply a bit harder a lot harder than for example the xs grip rubber which they unfortunately used on the drago which is the main disadvantage of the drago it's pretty crappy durability if you're unlucky on the drago you can pinch yourself a hole into the sole after only two weeks of climbing the shoe because you happen to be unlucky and climb in warmer conditions which is with sharper footholds so this is really the main disadvantage of the drago with the xs uh, grip rubber i don't really know honestly why they even use that at all nowadays anymore because in terms of friction i don't really see a difference in terms of xs grip and xs edge rubber i find the xs edge even better in hotter conditions also in terms of friction because it doesn't smear away that easily right on the dragger you really have the feeling that the, the the rubber comes off so easily that you that you're slipping off of your own rubber right on your own rubber so here we've got the excess edge uh, a lot better in my opinion than the excess grip still unmatched to something like the stealth rubber of 510 team which is the master when it comes to durability i've climbed this shoe for years and i didn't even resole it i 
I will resolve it. As you can see, I still can do that because I still have pinched, have not pinched a hole into this, punched a hole into this rubber sole there, even in the toe box, right? And the downturn retention of this rubber is obviously amazing as well. So yeah, here a middle ground when it comes to general durability. We've got XS Edge Vibram rubber. Finally, let's talk about weight. Might be just a small little climbing shoe geek detail, but who cares? It checks in at 430 grams on my kitchen scale. This is the middle ground again, uh, not rivaling something like the uh, 510 Team, which I think is at 380 grams even per pair, but also not quite as heavy as the Katana, which I think checks in at over 500 grams per pair. So yeah, in terms of lightness, we are again on the middle ground here. Conclusion, the Scarpa Instinct VS operates in the middle ground when it comes to the general features that we've looked at now. We've got a decent toe box here with decent patch of rubber for toe hooking, not as big as on the more bouldering oriented shoes, but not as small as on the beginner oriented shoes. The shoe is on the wider side of the, uh, of the spectrum. If you have a wider foot, this might be something for you. The hardness of the shoe is also decent. It's not as hard as the super hard models, like for example, the La Sportiva Miura or something like that. But it's also not as soft as, definitely not as soft as the more bouldering oriented shoes like the 510 Team or the Scarpa Drago. And in terms of durability, we are on middle ground here again as well, because we've got an XS Edge rubber sole which wears out not as fast as the XS grip but not as slowly as the stealth of 510 definitely uh, so yeah really middle ground here and this already gives a quite good indication to um, which terrain on which terrain this shoe is actually gonna shine you're probably climbing on something more like a slightly overhanging technical wall here where a decent amount of weight still reaches the toe tips right this is why we have the harder toe box the harder rubber uh, to withstand this kind of forces. It's not as soft as the more bouldering oriented shoes, which are really good on more abstract indoor climbing, you know, very overhanging where not a lot of uh, weight reaches the toe tips. So with this thing, we can actually do quite some solid route climbs all outdoors, probably even uh, in slightly overhanging terrain. And I had enough time over 10 weeks to test that actually out. So let's take a look at performance and see whether this is actually true. I've tested this shoe pretty intensely during 10 weeks of outdoor climbing during the recent Greece trip and I must say the, the number one striking feature that really stood out to me was the hardness of the shoe. This is also what made me a bit skeptic in the first place when I selected the shoe in the shop and tried it on and tried how it feels and everything. I'm used to more soft models like the 510 Team and what I tried previously was the Drago. Um, so the, the hardness was, was really something new and as well the, the, the wideness of the shoe in general because as I said previously I have a more narrow foot and I was not quite sure if it would fit me well but I had the feeling that the hardness of the shoe was really amazing and this worked out really amazingly especially in the hotter conditions of something like of an alpha climbing area like Greece right where obviously at some point you gotta have uh, you're gonna have days above 20 degrees and then the shoe is gonna get softer and something like the Drago is gonna be super you're gonna be swimming you're gonna be literally swimming in something like the Drago when it's getting hotter I already had that in Alba Vathin when I tried out the Drago and here in the Instinct VS that was absolutely no problem. The hardness of the shoe kept up its support even on vertical terrain, even on slightly overhanging terrain, even on hotter days and even after quite a significant amount of volume, right? I climbed a lot of meters during that trip and I must say in terms of durability the shoe really did not perform as bad as uh, some other models, okay? Especially not as bad as the Drago, which where you have, where you're unlucky, you pinch a hole into your, <laughs> you punch a hole into your sole because the, sh the sole, the rubber is so soft, right? So yeah, the shoe is very precise. It calls for a very precise stepping de technique. And the reason for that is I think that the shoe is pretty pointy, although it's wide, but it's quite pointy at the tip of the toe box. So you gotta hit your footholds pro properly. But if you can do that, you're at the same time very versatile because you have a lot of, uh, you know, you have a lot of room to turn your feet because the, the again, the, the tip is very pointy and you don't, uh, push yourself off those tiny little footholds if you turn your feet like for example on techniques like the the, the back step you know the drop knee um, which is something that happens quite a lot right when we're moving in slightly overhanging terrain 
I also did some really overhanging stuff, some kind of gym, more gym oriented outdoor climbing, especially on routes. Uh, this was, for example, this route called Donkey Kong that I, I made a video about that one as well. It was super overhanging with a lot of heel hooks and a lot of knee bars. And I could feel on the heel hooks, especially that the heel hook performance of the shoe could be better. Uh, mainly because of the orange rubber that comes up here and is this kind of rubber is just not as sticky as the black kind of rubber that they've used here so they should have done that with a with a black kind of rubber as they did it on the Scarpa Drago where they have evolved from this kind of problem in a, in the right direction so yeah I think the the main dominance of the shoe is on the more you know vertical slightly overhanging terrain the shoe is really comfortable you can climb in this shoe for a quite significant amount of time as well uh, if you're climbing for 20 minutes the shoe is still gonna wear on your on your foot quite solidly because the shoe doesn't stretch a lot it's all synthetic and if you fit it properly in the shop it's gonna fit properly on your shoe Shoe also during the climbing that's something that's really amazing as well and yeah uh, the conclusion is that really what I expected from this shoe came true namely that it is really good on the uh, vertical terrain not super overhanging on the super overhanging stuff where almost no weight reaches your toe tips I had the feeling that the shoe is a bit too hard for grabbing onto bigger more 3d like structures with your toes right here something like the 510 team especially shines a lot more or even the Scarpa Trago as well but yeah the vertical stuff where more weight reaches your toe tips and you have to be really pre precise and technical here this shoe is shining and I'm guessing that also for bouldering the same is true on the more uh, you know overhanging the more uh, 3d bouldering with lots of toe hooks and heel hooks something like the Drago would be a better choice because we've got a bigger toe hook patch and nice soft heel for lots of feeling here we are more on the harder side and this prevents you to grab toe hook toe um, you know to grab with your toes literally so yeah this is the conclusion when it comes to performance of the shoe really nice and hard for technical terrain for vertical terrain uh, too hard for the super overhanging stuff and really good in hot conditions as well it's kind of good in terms of durability not super good but pretty decent overall I have to say I have the feeling that this shoe is essentially a better katana or just a better vapor right because if you're climbing the vapor or the katana for some time as you can see the downturn wears out completely and you're gonna lose quite a lot of support from these kind of shoes on your technical uh, vertical walls which is what you buy these shoes for in the first place right this thing is also really good on the technical vertical walls but it does not lose its downturn so immediately and rapidly like these more beginner models and it's a it's as hard at least almost as hard as these models and um, yeah if the downturn wears off just a little bit from the new state this is gonna be a perfect shoe for uh, for vertical climbs right so it becomes really perfect as you break the shoe in the shoe becomes more and more perfect for the vertical stuff anyway I think that's it for this review I think I've said enough uh, let me know down below what you think about the Scarpa Instinct VS and drop a like if you're down there already that's always appreciated I hope you found it informative I'll see you soon in the next one, guys. Bye.